Now that we know how to find protons, electrons, and neutrons in an atom, how can we draw this and illustrate it? Well, we use what we call a Bohr diagram. The Bohr diagram allows us to look at the parts of an atom, and especially the electrons. The electrons are very important because they help us determine reactivity of that element or atom. So let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen has one proton, one electron, and no neutrons. So you would draw it as above. Let's look at helium. Helium has two protons, two electrons, and two neutrons. So we would have two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. In this section, we're going to focus on the electrons and the electron cloud. However, when we're looking at the Bohr diagram, we call this the electron shell, electron orbital, or an energy level. And there are some rules that you have to know to be able to draw a Bohr diagram. Because you may be wondering, how do you know where to put the electrons? So let's look at that next. For the Bohr diagram, you need to know the 288 rule. Vocabulary is very important in this section. Yes, the electrons are in an electron cloud. However, when we construct a Bohr diagram, we may call it an electron shell, electron orbital, or an energy level. But they all tell us where the electron resides. So the 288 rule, basically, it's very simple. If we have a Bohr diagram like this, then we need to know that the first energy level, which is closest to the nucleus, can only hold two electrons. The second energy level can hold eight electrons. And when it is full, then you must go to the third energy level, which can hold eight electrons. Now let's look at some examples of what this looks like. So if I have hydrogen, which has only one electron, according to my 288 rule, I can only put one electron in that first energy level. Well, what if I have lithium that has three electrons? Well, in the first energy level, we know it can hold up to two electrons. So I will do one electron here, and there is my second. Then I must go to the next energy level, electron shell or electron orbital. So I will put my third electron here. Do they get bigger than this? Absolutely. Let's look at sodium. Sodium has 11 electrons. So let's count them out. How many go in the first shell? Only two. Then I must go to the second shell. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But I need to go to eleven. So now I must go to the third shell. Why did I go to the third shell? 
because according to my rule, the second energy level can only hold up to eight electrons. So let's count them. Two, four, six, eight. So it is full. So then I go to the third shell.